In the age of Minecraft, many replicants of the game floated around on the App Store and on sketchy websites. And then you had games that were somewhat similar to Minecraft, but diverged enough away from it that it could be considered its own game. One game in particular though that I found a long time ago, a little bit after I found Minecraft, was Survival Craft. Another game that I grew up playing with, and a lot of people that played mobile games did as well, but forgot about after years of it not being as relevant as it once was at this point of time. It almost released verbatim at the almost exact same time that Minecraft did in 2011. I find that actually kind of a funny coincidence because did it really rip it off at that if they released at the same time? Well, I would say sort of, but I would say to an extent. Survival Craft had its own mechanics that diverged away from Minecraft. It was more focused on, you know, survival. Although there was a creative mode to the game, it didn't have quite the variety of items that Minecraft did or as many hostile mobs. It was focused more on nature and so therefore it had animals of the real world that didn't really constitute to Minecraft. There's no dimensions in survival craft. The caves are pretty boring and it hasn't been updated to that much since it's since the past five years. So there's hasn't been any major updates that have changed the game. And I think that's a part of why it hasn't become relevant. Although I think a lot Minecraft could actually do is learn from this game. And I mean that sincerely. The survival mechanics of this game are actually really clever if you think about what they were actually going for. Every little move that you have to make is like a chess piece because you have to think about every single decision you make in the game, whether it be about food and not starving your character to death, which is also in Minecraft. In this circumstance, you don't have a choice. In this game, there's no such thing as beds, so you can sleep anywhere and it doesn't matter what time of day you sleep in. Instead of having sheep, you grow cotton, the cotton plants to have clothes. Speaking of clothes, your character needs them in order to go into the colder environments. There's quite a bit of customization with clothing. It breaks the purpose of skins, I feel as if, but it's still a good addition to have that mechanic in the game. If you don't eat food after a while, it will eventually spoil, so eat it as soon as you possibly can. There's no way of refrigerating it, preserving it, anything like that. Meanwhile, the tier system for the weapons, there are spears, axes, and and machetes. There is only four tiers of armor, but there are five tiers of weapons. You have wooden, stone, copper, iron, and then diamond. The diamond part was definitely inspired off Minecraft. It also has its own redstone system, but instead it actually uses and is inspired off of actual electrical components and uses actual physical wires and color coding to represent different intricate systems that you can make inside of the game. While not as complex as Minecraft, I would say it definitely matches it and even exceeds it in certain aspects. You can even make elevators in this game. There was a point when the game was reasonably successful as the YouTube channel for Survival Craft has almost 150,000 subscribers, so it did have a following. Survival Craft, I'm pretty sure it was only made by two or three people. Don't count me wrong with that, but I could be wrong. Overall, th there's also weapons. As well, as I said before, there, there's a flintlock pistol that's the only gun in the game, but at least it has a gun. Minecraft has zero guns. There's bombs in the game as well, different levels of TNT, and this game had the campfire before Minecraft did. I wonder if Minecraft secretly looked up to this game at times. I'm, I'm serious when I say that. I also find it strange though that there's no fishing in this game because there's boats and there is fish in the game. Even There's even starfish in this game. And you also have a huge variety of different animals that you would, the kind of animals you would see on say like Animal Planet. You got three different types of bears. You got giraffes, you got rhinos, you got lions. Heck, they got reindeer. Oh yeah, and now would be a good time to mention probably the only monster in this game, werewolves. It says on the wiki, nearly everywhere, mostly in the forest, new or full moon is needed for spawning. And in the daytime, they turn into regular wolves, but at nighttime, they walk bipedally. When you kill a werewolf, you can get a diamond, and that's about it. So I guess killing it is reasonably valuable. 
The cool thing about Survival Craft as well is that it has on in the menu screen a recipe section so you can literally look at all the recipes that exist in the game so you don't have to look anything up at all. You Everything can be found inside of the game and that's pretty awesome. All the way down to the survival mechanics of, you know, you don't sleep long enough, you, you have less energy, you can't run, and then you eventually pass out of exhaustion or freezing to death. You do that somewhat in Minecraft, but only if you fall into the snow blocks. If there's those little tweaks and changes that could be added to Minecraft where you could control those things to experiment with the different levels of challenges, I think people could deal with and have a reasonably decent challenge if they didn't want to go hardcore. While this game might not have as much variety as Minecraft, you can still create some pretty amazing structures and in fact there's a whole section that you can connect to online which allows you to download other maps that people have made in this game there's reasonably a lot that you can actually explore with this oh another thing that this game did before minecraft was explorers ocean minecraft didn't have that much when survival craft already had ocean features and fish and minecraft didn't have any of that until 1.13 the game is relatively cheap Cheap, but there's a second version of the game called survival craft 2 it's four dollars in the app store but the difference between this one and the first one is that in this one you can download furniture packs which are customizable that people have created and they can vary from furniture to purely aesthetic decorations and ways that you can change the look of your home the problem i have with it is they all have to be concentric within one block space and you have to customize the voxels in that one block space. So you, if you want to make a structure that's more than one block in dimension, you have to cut it up into pieces, if that makes sense. There's even things such as booby traps where you can fall through floors or spikes and components that exist inside of real computers. It seems like a nod to what would actually happen if you were stranded and you had to survival, but if you were somehow mixed into the blocky universe of a Minecraft eccentric-like world. This game literally has craft in it. It acknowledges that it is a Minecraft clone. However, I'd say that this clone has stood the testament of time compared to many, many, many other Minecraft clones. And this one actually had a dedicated and heartfelt developers that actually cared about it and for a time updated it. I hope if they see this video this motivates them to keep putting progress into it because people I feel as if would definitely still check this game out. It definitely has the potential to be even more popular than what it was. Sadly this game hasn't had very much feature sense although I did see there was a 2.3 but it didn't seem as if there was that many new features. So who knows it shows that at least the developers are thinking about this game and it's been on their mind and it's not a completely abandoned project but I think it could benefit from a few content updates and the time of six or seven years ago, Minecraft, on the other hand, has evolved greatly since that time. But I think this game could benefit from its own direction as well. I remember playing this game at the age of probably about 10 years old and still remember having fun and creating these pretty cool houses. I created a village and I enjoyed playing other maps that people made because it was a cool experience that it had a similar vibe to Minecraft, but it was also its own thing. Thing. And the texture packs are super easy to get as well, so that adds a whole layer of... You have to go a bit out of your way to get mods, because this is a mobile game after all, so just be careful when you get mods. But I have seen some YouTubers play some mods. There, there was one with villagers or like tribesmen, and there's another zombie apocalypse mod. So there's quite a few of them made, and it shows that this game definitely is compatible with extra content but if you see a fishy website maybe don't click on download now links that's probably the worst thing you could do to your phone or anything at that point anyways i hope this video was informative to people that want to rediscover the game or didn't actually know the game beforehand i rediscovered this game myself and honestly it's pretty underrated 
If you want a classic Minecraft style gameplay of survival mode and it's relatively simple mechanics but also challenging, I would say definitely check this game out. Three or four dollars in today's standards, man, that's that's cheap as hell. You know, I think you could benefit from trying a new experience. Other than that, I got a Discord server, so go check it out. And other than that, I hope everyone has a good rest of their day. And check out my other videos if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel. See ya.